Good morning, everybody. Good morning. All right, everybody's awake this morning. That's good. Uh, this morning, turn to hymn number 19 through 21. Uh, we'll do the responsive reading here for a Sing His Praise worship sequence, and then we'll go into the songs. If we all will stand. I will praise you, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing praise to your name, O Most, Most High. You are my God. And I will praise you. You are my God. And I will exalt you. I have trusted in your mercy. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. I will praise the name of God with a song and will magnify him with thanksgiving. And that comes from Psalms 9, verse, verses 1 and 2, 118, verse 28, chapter 13, verse 5, and 69, verse 30. If we all will sing out loud on these songs. <coughs> Yeah, I think there's a, a 
the list of those who, who need prayer. And uh, we are just going to uh, not call all of them by name this morning, but uh, to lift them up uh, to the Lord. Uh, so uh, I tell you, I have a hard time. Uh, Wendy asked me to, uh, about a week ago, uh, to uh, write, put a letter in the uh, into the church, and I wrote it out, and and um, I left the house on two different occasions, and just flat forgot. And uh, sometimes I'm uh, I'm in that land of forgetfulness, you know. Are y'all there yet? Yeah. I'm there. <laughs> it's good to, good to be with you this morning. I thank the Lord for uh, this glorious opportunity to uh, stand here and. Uh, in this holy place, and uh, in a little bit, proclaim the uh, the word of God. Now we have a uh, Bible school coming up, and we probably still need some some workers, and uh, so we want to. Uh, if you haven't signed up, uh, you you have a volunteer, uh, we'll uh, certainly appreciate uh, if you want to be uh, uh, used of the Lord uh, in Bible school this year. Uh, hope and uh, pray that we'll have a, a good turnout. And so you keep that in mind and be praying for that, uh, if you will. Uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Every head bowed, every eye closed, and every Christian pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we count it all joy, and we count it, Lord, a privilege to be able to uh, assemble ourselves together in the house of God uh, this morning. Father, we thank you, Father, that you made it possible, Lord, for each one of us to be able to come physically uh, that we might worship you today in spirit and in truth. I just want to tell you this morning, Lord, that we love you. Thank you, Lord, that you loved us so much. Lord, you were willing to look beyond our faults, our sins, and our shortcomings. And that you were willing to send your only begotten Son into this world to be born of a virgin, to go to the cross of Calvary, and to suffer and bleed and die. And the Lord, shed his precious blood so in order that we might have forgiveness of sins Lord, and by grace through faith Lord we want to lift up those who uh, Lord, are sick and suffering today uh, Lord those in the nursing homes and hospitals and those who are homebound uh, Lord uh, you know their needs and Lord, there may be some uh, sitting here this morning in the sanctuary that uh, has some problems uh, physically. Uh, Lord, uh, we ask Father in Jesus' name, uh, Lord, that you might each, meet each one of them, uh, Lord, at their point of being. Lord, that you might, uh, Lord, just reach way down and wrap your everlasting arms around them. And, and uh, Lord, lift them up. Uh, Lord, I pray that they'll be encouraged. just blessed uh, in their life this morning. And Lord, I pray, Lord, if there's been any sin committed, that, uh, that they would look to you, Lord, for uh, for forgiveness and, and restoration. Pray for those folks over there and, and we pray, Lord, that, that you continue to be with them. Uh, Lord, uh, be with the people around the world, the nations. Uh, Lord, I pray, Lord, that they would uh, see a need, Lord, to uh, reach out with a helping hand uh, to those folks. I pray that our leadership in this country, uh, Lord, would uh, look to you, Lord, and Lord, if they're not saved, uh, Lord, from the present right on down, I pray, Lord, that today would be the day, Lord, that they would re repent of their sin, and ask for forgiveness. 
and be accepted into the family of God, Lord, that, that they might give them wisdom and knowledge and understanding uh, to make the right kind of decision pertaining to the people of this nation. Lord, as we listen to the news and uh, watch, uh, as Billy Graham would say, by way of television, uh, Lord, we, we know we're in a mess. And we need your help. Uh, we, we need uh, for a, a revival to break out across this land. And we need the people of God to be uh, restored. And we might experience that revival. Lord, that when we get revived, uh, Lord, that we'll shine uh, like a, a, a spotlight in a dark world. We're those out there, Lord, that's lost and, and undone, dead, and trespassed and sin, blinded uh, by Satan himself. Uh, Lord, that they would see the light of Jesus and, and come to him for salvation. Pray you bless this church this morning and all that's within the sanctuary. Uh, lift them up. I pray, Lord, for the anointing of your spirit to be upon your servant today. And pray your will be done as we, Lord, uh, uh, listen to the music and as we sing and lift up our voices uh, in praise and adoration even to the Lord our God. And may everything be done according to your will and may music and the singing be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. If you all will stand and turn to hymn number 18, hymn number 18, saying, let's just praise the Lord, let's sing it twice to this morning. <coughs> sin all my life. 
Amen. 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 That's right. I remember when I was little, and you know how little girls are, and you start to do something and say, don't you know that's a sin? You ever had someone to tell you that? That's a sin. I didn't know it was a sin. I thought it was okay. Uh, I did a lot of things I didn't know uh, uh, I thought was okay. It was a sin. Sins of ignorance. And uh, sometimes we are we don't want to plead in ignorant, you know, of some things that we do, but it's uh, but but they made atonement uh, for uh, the sins of, of ignorance uh, in the holy things of God. And we don't know we don't know all all there is to know about about this book called the the B I B L E. Uh, we don't know all about how we ought to live the the Christian life, and so we we tend to make mistakes. Uh, I'm, I'm still uh, I'm still growing. Uh, how old are y'all? Uh, some of you still uh, 18, 19, 20. Uh, I, I I try to think in my mind I'm I'm still young. Uh, I mean I'm young in my mind. Uh, my body tells me different. But I like to think that I'm young. I don't, I don't go around thinking that I'm old well. You know. But I still make, I still commit sins of, of uh, ignorance. And so uh, he says there in, in this uh, scripture, in verse, uh, in verse 15 of, uh, of Leviticus, if you look there with me, of chapter 5, Leviticus chapter 5, verse 15. If a person commits a trespass and sins unintentionally in regard to the holy things of the Lord, then he shall bring to the Lord uh, as his trespass offering a ram without blemish, from the flocks with your valuation in shekels of silver according to the shekel of the sanctuary as a trespass offering. Now what y'all bring? And he shall make restitution in verse 16 for the harm that he has done in regard to to the holy thing, and shall add one fifth to it. Bring them shekels, and then you add you add to it, and give it to the priest. Uh, can I get a love offering this morning? <laughs> Bring it to the priest, and, uh, and so the priest uh, shall make atonement. Aren't y'all glad y'all have to come to me and confess your sins? I'm, I, I'm, I, I'm, 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 a priest, but not the priest. I'm a saint. Amen? I'm a saint. But uh, the priest shall make an atonement for him with the ram and the trespass offerings. And then, once that's done, it shall be uh, forgiven him. And then I want you to go over to uh, Numbers, Numbers if you will, uh, chapter 15. Numbers chapter 15. Now I want you to read with me. Uh, beginning in verse 22. Uh, verse 22. Numbers 15, verse 22. And this is what it says. Everybody, do you have that? Do you have it? Say amen. amen. All right. Okay. And then the verse 22. And it says there in that uh, verse uh, 20, 22. If you sin unintentionally and not do and do not observe all these commandments which the Lord has spoken to Moses, all that the Lord has commanded you by the hand of Moses, from the day the Lord gave commandment and onward throughout your generations, uh, then, then, it will be, if it is unintentionally committed, 
or that the knowledge of the congregation, that the whole congregation now we're going from one to the whole congregation shall offer one young bull as a burnt offering as a sweet aroma to the Lord with his grain offering and his drink offering according to the ordinance and one kid of the goats as a sin offering so the priest shall make atonement for the whole congregation of the children of Israel and it shall be forgiven them for it was unintentional they shall bring their offering and an offering made by fire to the Lord and their sin offering before the Lord for their unintentional unintended sin and so and then and so and David said pray cleanse thou me Lord from my secret Secret sin. Y'all got the secret sins? Secret sins. That's, that's them sins that the congregation don't know about. That's the sins that the priest don't know about. And that's the sins that the preacher don't know about. Secret sins. Y'all got any secret, secret sins? Yeah. Well, sin is always sin in the sight of God, whether you are conscious of it or not, it's still, it's still sin. Sins of ignorance need atonement. Sins of ignorance need atonement. Just as truly as do conscious sins. Now I believe that every once in a while we might commit a sin of, of ignorance. You know, but conscious sins. I believe when you commit a conscious sin, the Holy Spirit of God is going to prick your heart, and you're going to know that you just sinned. And I, I got news for you: the moment that you know it and realize it, that's when you ought to confess it. Don't let the sun go down on your wrath, because if you're in the place that I'm in in life. If I can't remember to bring the letter, I know I'll forget to repent. To repent. Before we ever go to bed at night, we ought to get down on our knees before God and pray, Lord, forgive me of my sins of this day. Whatever I've done, whatever I've committed, and, and the Holy Spirit will bring it to your mind. Confess it. Don't, don't go to bed. And go to sleep with sin in your life. You know, we're going to stand before God one day at the judgment. And anything that's not under the blood, we're going to, have to, we're going to stand and be judged for it. We're going to be judged for it. So we need to put it on the blood. Well, Jesus prayed on the cross, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. The blind, as I want to speak to you about the blindness of the human heart, when, the, when they cried, that evil crowd, crucify! They knew full well what they cried out. They knew what they were crying their vile request as they cried out time and time and time again. Crucified. Well, it was that time of the year. The Bible said we can, I can turn one loose. Do you want, do you want to release Barabbas who is a murderer? They cried the more, crucify Jesus. Fire, evil, cruel. And so what Pilate do? Pilate nailed him, nailed him to the tree. Listen, they should have known. 
They study the Old Testament. It's it amazing that when our Lord walked by the sea, and as these guys fishing, and he said, Come follow me, and I'll make you fish in the wind. They talk about the disciples being ignorant and unlearned. They were looking for Messiah. They were looking for Messiah. Andrew, when he met Jesus, well, what did he do? He went and found Peter. Come follow me. Come on, let me tell you a man I found. On the morning, on his brother, though, about the Lord. They knew all about the Lord was going to come. They knew all about it. They studied the scriptures. They were learning men. Scribes, Pharisees, priests. They should have known who he was. They'd heard about all the miracles that he was performing. Seen with their eyes what he was doing. They saw the miracles he performed. But yet, those that cried out, those that criticized him, they were forced to admit, never has a man spoke like this man. Never. And that's John 7, 46. Jesus came to John in the river, in the Jordan River, and was baptized and prayed. Went out into the desert 40 days. And then when he came back, he went forth. Went forth doing good. Preaching. People were getting saved. There was no excuse for the ignorance. There's no excuse for, for us today, for you and I. We have this blessed book. No excuse for them. But you know what? It only demonstrated the blindness the blindness of their hearts. The Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And so we're going to stand before God and we're going to stand there without excuse. We have to bless the word of God. We have the preaching and the teaching of God's holy word. We have Christian music. You know what's sad? You know what's really sad this morning? They were ignorant. It's still going on today. It's still going on today. The tragedy of, of this uh, Lord Jesus Christ, the blessed Son of God, being rejected. Rejected. By the sinner. Pilate said, what shall I do when Jesus was called the Christ? He wanted to know what to do. His wife had, had dreams. She said, you, you don't need to have any dealings with this man. Pilate said, what shall I do when Jesus was called the Christ? Let me ask you a question. What are you doing with him? What are you doing with Jesus today? Do you love him with all of your heart? With all of your heart? Are you serving him? Are you serving him today? You 
you see one or two things, you either you either despise and reject him, or you receive him and serve him. One of the two. You give, you give your whole life. We sing that song, I surrender all. Well, what does that many times people lie? Just lie. Stand up in the house of God and say, Lord, I surrender all. All to thee I fully give. And no, we don't. Is that a sin of ignorance? But even our Lord said, Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. <coughs> Number five. Share with you a lovely explanation of his own teachings. In the Sermon on the Mount, our Lord taught his disciples. Love your enemies. Love your enemies. I have an example in Sunday school this morning. It's hard. It's hard. Humanistically speaking, it's hard to love your enemy. How many of us, if, if we'll be honest this morning, will confess that we love them? I doubt it. I doubt it very seriously. We've, we're supposed to love him. We're supposed to pray for him. <laughs> love your enemies. That's what our Lord taught his disciples. Love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. That's not easy. Even as a child of God, it's not easy for a child of God to bless them that curse us. Someone asked me one time why I didn't preach on the Jehovah Witnesses and the Mormons. I don't agree with them. I don't believe what they believe according to the Word of God. And so we have no affiliation with them. But we should love them. We should pray for them. That they'll get doctrinally right in, the, in their mind and in their heart according to God's holy word. Love, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. That hate you. There's people in America that hate Christians. Hate God fearing people. Hate us. Do good to them. Reach out with a, with a helping hand and a loving heart. Look beyond who they are, what they are, how they live, and how they conduct themselves like the Lord did us. Pray for them that despitefully use you. Do you think people are using it? Absolutely. Absolutely. What about them to persecute you? Pray for them, love them, lift them up to the Lord. Above everything else, if you read this holy word, our Lord Jesus practice what he preached. He practiced what he preached. 
and we're being watched every day. Everywhere we go, everywhere we go, people are watching, people are listening. Our Lord practiced what he preached. And are we not supposed to, to uh, emulate him, to be just like him? The Bible said grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. That's, that's he, he not only taught the truth, but was himself the truth. He said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. In John 14, 6. And on the cross, he sets us an example. I want you to look at him hanging on the cross. He's praying for his enemies. But he did not forgive them. You read the Bible. While he was on the cross, he did not forgive them. He prayed for them. He exhorted his disciples to forgive their enemies, but he does not exhort them. Uh, but he, he did he did exhort them to pray for them. So what? Watch this. If someone hurts you, someone offends you. Are we not to forgive those who, who wrong us? Are we not to forgive those who wrong us? Does Scripture teach that under all, all circumstances we must forgive? No. Under all circumstances, no, we do not have to forgive. It does not teach that. So I want you to read with me. I want you to go with me to, to Luke chapter 17. Luke 17. And we're going to read verses 3 and 4 of Luke 17. And that's what the Word of God says. Take heed to yourselves. If your brother sins against you, rebuke him. Let him know what he's done. Inform him of what he's done against you. And if he repents, forgive him. And if he sins against you seven times in a day, and seven times in a day returns to you saying, I repent, you shall forgive him. But if he does not repent, you listen? If he does not repent, you do not forgive him. No, you don't have to forgive him. That's we are taught in this verse of Scripture that there is a condition that must be met by the offender before we pronounce forgiveness. The one who has wronged us first must repent. Must repent. He or she must judge themselves for the wrong and give evidence of their sorrow. That they just can't, they just can't commit an offense, a wrong, a 
against us, or you and I as an individual, without repentance. Therefore, we are not are obligated to forgive them. But suppose, but suppose, the offender does not repent. Suppose he doesn't repent. Then I am not to forgive him or her. Let there be, let there be no misunderstanding here. Even though the one who has wronged me does not repent. As Randy Travis would say, nevertheless, on the other hand, I must not harbor ill feelings. As a child of God, he hasn't repented. I'm not going to forgive him. But I am not to harbor ill feelings in my heart against him or her. There must be no hatred or malice cherished in the heart. In the heart. So on, on the other hand, I must not treat the offender as if he has or she has done no wrong. I think in our country today, there's a misconception of the law. How many people go out here and break the law our local police officers, county police officers, county, that these people can break the law, they'll pick them up, put them in jail, and they're out on the street before they turn around good. So the offender, I must not treat that person as if they have done no wrong. There, there is, there's consequences to everything we do. Consequences. Truth and consequences used to be on TV years ago. So we don't treat that person as if they've done no wrong. Oh, you just come on in here. I, I love you. No. No. Say forgiveness covers a broad spectrum, does it not? Forgiveness. So I don't treat the, the offender as if he's done no wrong. Because if I did, I would be condoning what he did was okay. What he does is okay. If a person sins and continues to sin, and we treat them as if they haven't done anything. We're just giving them approval. Approval. What good does it do if a person robs a store, they're caught, they're put in jail, and in just a few days they're released as if they've done nothing wrong? Because certain lives matter. You can use it and turn it around. I wonder how many people have turned this around. They take it, and I'll take this verse, and I like this one, this, 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 this is my verse. But that one over there, I don't want that, I don't want that one. That one. We have to uphold the requirements of righteousness that we ought to do. The Bible, the Bible is plain. Let me ask you a question. Does God, does God in heaven forgive when there is no repentance? No. Absolutely not. God does not forgive. If a man sins, in order to be forgiven,
forgiven, he's got to repent. He has to repent. Forgiveness to be received by God, a person has to repent of that transgression. For the scripture declares in 1 John 1 9, if we confess, confess our sins, God is faithful to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness and we are brought back into the fellowship of Almighty God. Restore. What am I to do? If one has injured me and they didn't repent, what is my obligation to that person? My obligation is that I am to pray for them. I'm to lift their name up before the throne of God and pray that God Almighty would speak to their heart because only God can forgive sins. And I'm to pray to God, my Heavenly Father, lift their name up and, and intercede on their behalf. If you want to break the law, you might need Henderson Johnson. Well, I have a lawyer sitting on God's right hand. His name is Jesus. Amen. And he intercedes. And I take my petitions and my prayers and the Holy Spirit presents them before the throne and the Lord Jesus intercedes on our behalf. And so when I pray for that person, the advocate, the lawyer on God's right hand, he'll even sing for that person. So number six, how can forgiveness of sins be obtained? I don't know if I can read that clock or not. Two minutes. No, 12 minutes. I don't want to keep you too long. You might lose your train of thought. But how can forgiveness of sins be obtained? What is the ground on which a holy God will forgive sins? There's a vital difference, beloved, between divine forgiveness and human forgiveness. Listen to what the Bible says. Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise again uh, from the grave, from the dead, the third day, and that repentance and remission of, of sins or forgiveness should be preached in, uh, in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem, and going out through Judea, on out through the whole earth. In Luke 21, 46, and 47. And be it known unto you, therefore, me and the brethren, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. And by him all that believe are justified from all things from which you could not be justified by the law of Moses, Acts 13, 38, and 39. Christ was on the cross, shedding his blood, when he cried, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. He was atoning, making atoning sacrifice. The Bible says, Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission, no forgiveness of sins. The blessed Son of God came to this earth knowing full well 
knowing full well before he was birthed into this world by his mother, Mary, a virgin. Knew full well that he was going to have to suffer and bleed and die on the tree for your sins and mine. For your sins and the sins of the whole world. The Bible says in Colossians 1, 4, in whom we have redemption, redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Even the forgiveness of sins. I wonder this morning, where are you in your walk with Jesus? Where are you? Has someone offended you? We need to pray for them. We need to love them and pray for them. We're going to have a time now to have an altar call. If you have ought against someone, you need to come to this altar and make things right. You need to go to them if they're here. You need to make things right with them if you have all. If someone has offended you, then you, you need to come pray for them. You need to come pray for them. You shouldn't, you shouldn't leave this place this morning that before you make everything well with your soul. This morning. This morning. The invitation is a time of getting right with your fellow man and get right with God. Want every head bowed, every eye closed, no one looking around, every Christian praying. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for that word forgiveness. Thank you, Lord Jesus. That when I was lost in trespassing and sin, I was walking in darkness, alienated from the commonwealth of Israel. Dead and trespassed and sin. And Lord, you sent your Son, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, to come to this world and go to the cross. To suffer, bleed, and die go down into the heart of the earth and rise again on the third day, conquering death, sin, and the grave. Having made it possible for us to be forgiven of our sins and our trespasses. I pray now, Father, that the Holy Spirit has already done his work. And Lord, that one that needs to come to the altar will come. Make things right this morning. May your will be done. In Christ's name, amen. Would you stand? Just the altar's open. For whatever reason, the altar's open.
waste a lot of time, Lord. I come to Thank <laughs> you. 